Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to part three of the debut episode of JJL Live, the new show, new direction for the Joystick Justice League, with your host here, Mike Frusios, doing it solo. So, going back to my roots, when I used to do campus radio, just doing it, and basically like a live read, reading the news, talking about headlines, and just, you know, having some fun with some commentary, some punditry, and some uh, good old-fashioned podcastery, if that's a, a term. So let's get into some Sony news. We just came back from Nintendo in the last segment. Got about half an hour left in this debut episode, so we're still, we still got Microsoft to cover and third parties. Let's go over the next 10 minutes with Sony news. Of course, everybody knows that so, the PS4 is leading the charge in the eighth generation right now. The sales show it, 12.4 million units sold so far. It's an incredible first year for Sony, completely turned around the brand. Is, is it, it hasn't quite turned around Sony as a whole. I mean, they, overall, even though PS4 is doing really well for Sony and actually kind of creating a profit, their mobile division is failing miserably. I'm going to get something in a sec that may fix that, but it really depends on whether providers are going to take the bait. But anyway, the PlayStation brand is healthy, and that's without really having any major exclusives this Christmas. I mean, you can't really argue that Little Big Planet 3 is like a system seller or anything like that. They're really going on the strength of the PlayStation Network and all the third-party games that have a better, slightly better resolution or and or frame rate than their Xbox counterparts. But in terms of exclusives, I mean, really, I mean, you're up against Master Chief Collection and Sunset Overdrive on the Xbox. You're up against Smash Brothers, Bayonetta 2, Hyrule Warriors, Mario Kart for the Wii U. I mean, it's, it's lopsided, but here's the thing that... Like, like how, how does that work? You know, how does that work that, that, that Sony's the leading console without even having a major exclusive? It comes down to one major thing. Consumer confidence, all right? They, they turn their game around from the PS3 generation and, and, and much earlier than people give them credit for. And it all started with their incredible attitude towards the next generation of game developers, which I've been talking about for so long. Their incredible, warming, like, hands-off attitude but supportive attitude towards indies that has resulted in some truly incredible partnerships. Just looking already at some of the stuff that's come out for the PS3 and PS4 on the indie marketplace and stuff that's slated to come out, like and, and especially their, their pretty much exclusive deal with Devolver Digital, which is becoming a giant in the industry, in the indie industry, things are looking bright for the Sony brand, but consumer confidence. They came out swinging and hit, and hit, all, the right, hit all the right notes when they revealed the PS4. The, the whole hands-off stance on DRM, again, the, the attitude towards indies, the, the horsepower, the fact that all this press has been coming out about, you know, how, you know, certain third-party games don't perform as well on the Xbox One compared to the PS4, it's just, it's just been positive press. And I'm not saying Nintendo's, I mean, sorry, Sony's done everything 100% right over the last year. I mean, they we're going to get into some of the sour stuff of what's been happening to Sony, but overall... They've poised themselves for when the generation truly takes hold. I mean, anybody who follows video game consoles throughout the years always knows that the first year is kind of like a hodgepodge, mixed bag of, of like some great titles, mostly okay titles, and some real stinkers. That's just expected. So, you know, you get a lot of pundits out there and, you know, a lot of, a lot of fear mongers. Who, who always talk about, oh, the PS4 is underpowered and the Xbox One's underpowered and, oh, they won't compare to PCs and they won't, this generation will be shorter than the last. This, this episode is too short to talk about cloud processing and I think I'm going to make that a few, if you, we're probably going to talk about that next week, actually. That'll be maybe an episode of The Greek Speaks or, or maybe a week after. We'll talk about cloud processing, processing soon enough and how that's going to affect the 8th generation. But already... With games like Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, I can't believe I'm saying this, because Call of Duty was always kind of like graphically like a decent looking game, but now it's become one of the best looking games of the year. Like I was playing the, I just finished the campaign the other day on the PS4, and some of those cutscenes are, are just stupid, like ridiculously, like amazing. Like anybody talking about that the PS4 or even the Xbox One, which is, has a slightly lower resolution than the PS4 version, these consoles are underpowered. I don't know what they're playing. And, and the other lie from the PC elitist, the other straw man argument that they're always throwing up is that, oh, it's so cheap to get a 4K capable gaming rig. I'm like, yeah, if you want to play it like minimal settings. Like that, that's always the part that PC elitists 
always forget to mention that if you actually do want to play at max settings you will have to put a little bit of money in i've done my shopping around and i know what my budget is and mo most people's budgets are consoles are still cheaper overall and, and they're simpler to work with and you and what you get is what you get but anyway i'm getting into something else i want to talk about sony i've got about six minutes left six or seven minutes left for this this segment they're doing okay, all right? Now, they're, like I said, their mobile division is suffering. One little tidbit of uh, information I do want to share, you may, because most of you probably don't even follow Sony's mobile division, I, I understand, they don't promote it very well, but the new Xperia is, is interesting, okay? The new Xperia Z3, I think it's either coming out or is out already, has remote play built in, all right? So this is a true PlayStation phone in the sense that you can actually play your ps4 on your phone and it's and it's cool because it's actually going to have a little clip that you hook to your dualshock 3 or your dualshock 4 and it's actually going to put your phone in landscape mode above your controller so you can just play like this right or i think it, it, you can attach your tablet but i don't know how that's going to wear like the weight of it but regardless i've i've seen early reviews of it and, and one guy was actually playing crucible on it and he didn't show too much gameplay footage, but he had tested, uh, I think I have the link of, of who actually said it, it was lifehacker.com.au that actually makes the claim that Destiny's Crucible plays with virtually no lag on the Z3, whereas on the Vita, there is a lot of lag. You know, the, the remote play is okay. I mean, you can play stuff like Mercenary Kings, like slower paced stuff like The Binding of Isaac or whatever, but... You know, for fast-paced, twitchy stuff, the remote play doesn't cut it on the Vita at this point with Wi-Fi the way it is, or maybe, I don't know, I'm not an engineer, but I don't think the Vita can handle remote play the way they envisioned it, but it seems like this Z3 has more horsepower into the hood. It can actually handle a, a, a more latency-free, lag-free experience, so it remains to be seen, but unfortunately, it comes down to providers. I mean, here in Canada, the only way you can get your hands on one is through Bell. I mean, Rogers doesn't even want to carry it. They're, they're just do Samsung and iPhones and all that fun stuff, so it, they don't promote it very well. You know, I don't see a lot of marketing outside of niche markets, so hopefully that'll turn things around, but I've got a few minutes left to talk about Sony. While things may be rosy, you know, they've been having some problems too. You know, let's talk about, let's wrap up this year and some of the problems so we can actually look to next year and where things might get rosy again. But Drive Club, wow, what a disaster. I mean, I'm really feeling for the guys at Evolution what happened to these guys. And I'm really fearing for the company as a whole because Evolution has, has had a troubled few years. I mean, if you've been following the company that's that put out Drive Club, their last game was MotorStorm Apocalypse, and if you were following what happened, um, you know that that was a disaster. Because what it was supposed to launch, and then the uh, the tsunami in Japan happened, and they couldn't market it because they were they were afraid that people would find it offensive or insensitive or something like that. You know, again, you know, see there you go. You know, people getting offended by everything. This is why I get so mad. And people just get offended over the dumbest shit. Like, you know, I would be the last person to get offended that a video game came out at the same time, you know, as a natural disaster. I mean, I'm just... And, and, look, and look what happened. I mean, they, they, they lost so much money on that game. The game did not sell. They lost a whole bunch of money. And now look what happened Drive Club. Supposed to be a launch game for the PS4. Got delayed by a year. And now it comes out and they still can't make it work. And this isn't the only case of this happening. Just this week... Master Chief Collection dropped on Tuesday, and already they're having matchmaking issues. And, and there's similar, st and there's been other games that have been affected by this too. But I don't know, man. Drive Club's a special case. Something like Master Chief Collection, I know, will be patched in about a week. Already, Call of Duty, people were complaining about it at launch, saying, "Oh, there was lag issues in the multiplayer and and frame rate issues and stuff," and it got fixed in a week. I think this is just something that we're gonna have to deal with while everybody's catching up on internet service. But Drive Club is a special case where I think Evolution just got too ambitious, didn't really have a clearly defined idea that you could describe in a sentence. And I can't remember, I wish I could find the video, but somebody put that very elegantly. It's, I think it might've even been Colin Moriarty on Podcast Beyond who said that it, it, you can't describe that game in one sentence. And I think that's where it failed to capture the imagination. So. I'm really praying that they can fix the server issues on that game and get it on a plus and that might give it a rejuvenation, especially if they cut the price to like maybe 40 bucks and try to get out the door. It might have a second life in 2015, but overall, flop, man. So I'm, I'm kind of, best wishes to Evolution, but I think with two flops in a row like this, 
uh, future's not looking bright. I hope they can turn this around. But uh, give them some time. Uh, also, wrapping up Sony news, before we kind of touch on 2015, SharePlay is not exactly what they thought it was going to be. But again, I just want—I really want to address fear mongering here because, yes, yeah, sorry, Call of Duty, you got the news. People are freaking out that Call of Duty, you can't do share play with it. And there's uh, about 13 other games, including Tomb Raider, Fez, Call of Duty Ghosts, Hotline Miami, and you can check the list for yourself that don't use the share play function. And essentially, one of the developers on Call of Duty explained that, all right, well, you know, at the time we were developing this game, we didn't really have access to this feature. But in this day and age, it's something that can be very easily patchable back in. And Sony's even already clarified that this is something that the developers can choose to put in their game. They're not mandated to do it. And, and it sounds like it's just something that's gonna be patched in. So again, with all the fear mongers that, take, that do this clickbaiting and jump all over these headlines as if they're actual real news, I think we have to accept the reality that one thing that's gonna happen in the at least the early part, if not the whole part of the eighth generation, while connection speeds are all over the place and in their infancy is that we're going to have to expect that a lot of games are are going to require some patches day one. I mean, we're, we're just dealing with a new platform. We're dealing with a new generation. There's always going to be hiccups, but it doesn't mean that a game is broken. I mean, for every Battlefield 4, there's 10 other games that do get patched within a week. So just try to try to relax, people. Just watch your blood pressure. You know, I'm sure Master Chief Collection in about a week's time, you guys will be playing that like crazy. There'll be no matchmaking issues. Just enjoy the games. Stop getting worked up over 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 headlines and clickbaiting, and just breathe, breathe. We'll be back, all right, with some Microsoft news in a bit. Stay tuned.